Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've had several individuals send me messages or whatnot asking me to do a video on blade guide alignment, maintenance, blades, that kind of stuff. So we're going to touch on a little bit of it today. I'm not going to be able to cover it all. If I did it all, it'd be a really long video. Um, but one of the first things, let's talk about the belt. You want to make sure that your belt is adjusted on a regular basis. When you put a brand new belt on, it, within 20 hours, you are going to need to adjust that belt. Because if you don't adjust that belt, it is going to be losing traction or losing grip. And as it starts to lose grip, then you're going to start to lose blade speed. Once you start losing blade speed, you're going to start getting poor quality cuts. It don't matter how sharp your blade is, if you're pushing that sawmill, you're going to get poor quality cuts if your belt is not adjust, adjusted proper tension. Woodmiser sells a nice little gauge for it. Um, can't remember off the top of my head, I think it's 7 16 inch deflection at X number of pounds. I've done it so many times, I honest to God, I don't know where my tension gauge is at. Um, I go by feel. The next step in this process we're going to discuss is the blades themselves. A lot of people complain about blade breakage. Majority of the time, if you're getting blade breakage, it is because of improper blade guide roller alignment or improper alignment period. You're putting that blade in a bad position or you're putting extra friction or extra torque on that blade and you're causing extra stress, extra fatigue in that metal. So we're gonna discuss some of these blade guide alignment techniques. Um, one of the things, I recently learned, yes, I'm still learning myself. I'd always, I would put my blade guide alignment tool on there and I would pick one of my blade guide or my bed rails. I would normally use that one so I had more access and I would measure up from that one blade bed rail to the top of the blade guide alignment tool. When you clip your blade guide alignment tool on, make sure that it is in between two teeth in the gullet. Because if you've got it on a set down tooth, then that tooth is going to be pushing this end of the blade guide roller down a little bit. So you always want to make sure you're in a gullet. You want to make sure your blade is clean. If you've got sap build up on the top or the bottom, then obviously this alignment tool is not going to be aligned to the blade. It's going to be aligned to the sap. So make sure all of the blade is clean. I normally do it with a brand new blade. That way I know what's ready to roll. But you measure up from that bed rail, and I go to the height of the top of the blade guide alignment tool. You can then reposition the head to where the rear part of the blade guide alignment tool is over the same bed rail and measure up to it. A um, friend of mine recently shared a trick. It's probably not gonna be quite as perfectly accurate because this bed rail might be a 30 second higher or lower than that bed rail. So you might have over this two and a half feet or whatever this rule, this uh, level is laying over the top might have a little bit of difference. However, it's not gonna be enough to matter in my opinion. So what we're doing now is we'll measure up from there and then we go to the back side and we're able to measure to the same deal without moving the saw head. Another trick you can use, some people are using speed squares. You know, you get everything dialed in and then you figure out what the height of that speed square and your ruler. Some people are using carpenter squares, but you can see the daylight in between the two items better than you can, some of us older folks that need reading classes can see the lines on a ruler. One of the worst things, in my opinion, that you can use is a dadgum tape measure. You've got flimsiness, you've got, depending on how you're pinching that thing, you got all sorts of deflection, and it needs to be more accurate than a, a tape measure is. The last thing I would use for blade guide alignment is a tape measure. It's, you ain't gonna get accurate enough. With this metal ruler, you can feel it being square to that bed, square to the level. You can just feel it being square. You can feel it this way, or you can line it up this way. Whichever way you wanna do it. 
but you can feel it being square instead of wondering if that tape is going straight up and down or not. Your adjustment bolts in the back. You've got them on the top and on the bottom. I'm going to show you on the outside blade guide roller because it'll be a little bit easier to see, I think. But you've got bolts on the top and the bottom of that little receiver, and then you've got bolts on the left and the right. Those bolts is how you adjust the top and bottom, adjust your tilt on your blade guide rollers. The left and right ones will adjust your alignment of your back of your, your flange to the back of the blade. All of these things are covered in your owner's manual. My owner's manual is sitting right over there next to my saw blades. I still use it religiously. Some of these things I don't check very often because unless a bolt gets loose, it's pretty rare that mine gets out of alignment except for the tilt forward up and down on it. As this blade guide roller wears, it's going to start shaping like a cone. Well, once I get a few thousandths wear on it, I replace them. This is a consumable item. You can only adjust it out so much, and then you're going to start getting to where you can no longer adjust it. Replace them. They sell them every day. Well, they used to. Parts are harder to get nowadays. These belts inside your pulleys, your blade wheels, band wheels, whatever you want to call them. I run, Woodmiser sells a, I think it's a B73 belt for the LT70 25 inch band wheel. I run a B72. I run the B72 because of the amount of drier pine that I cut, you will end up with sawdust building up underneath that belt and it will get between that belt and that pulley and you'll start getting a hammer action on that blade and it will start breaking blades regular. I've had it break the bolts that's holding some of this together. Well, when you start getting enough vibration in there that you're breaking bolts and breaking blades, it ain't the blade's fault. It's some point of an operator error. Back when I run the loose belts, I would check and clean underneath those belts every single time I change the blade. When I change a blade on this machine, every single time, I will grab the blade guide roller and see if they got any shake in them. It'll tell you quick if a bolt is worked loose. On the outside blade guide arm or blade guide roller, according to the manual, you take it out all the way, bring it in about a half inch, and then you hook your guide on there or your blade guide alignment tool, and you do that very same alignment measurement and procedure just like we did on the inside blade guide. All of these factors come into play to make sure you're producing the best quality lumber. None of us like doing the hard work that it takes to produce lumber and have it coming out poor quality. You don't want to sell it, you don't want to use it, you don't want to be associated with it. It just makes you look bad. So producing the best quality lumber you could possibly produce requires maintenance from you on your sawmill and your equipment. <clears throat> Another thing that a lot of people are doing is they're trying to get too much life out of these blades. They're pushing these blades past dull. Once that blade gets to where it's dull, you probably should have changed it two or 300 board foot ago. Because what you're doing is putting extra stress and extra friction on that blade, making it cut while it's dull or forcing it to do things that it ain't, it's no longer sharp enough to do. It's kind of like cutting with a pocket knife. It's more dangerous to cut with that knife if it's dull than if it's sharp because you're having to use more force. With this saw blade, when you start having to force it because it is dull, that tells you you should have already changed that blade because if you change them a little bit more frequently than you normally do or than what most people do, Number one, you'll get more sharpness, which will give you more blade life out of that blade. There's less stress been put in that blade. There's less stress been put on your sawmill. There's less friction, less wear and tear on the entire operation, on the entire piece of equipment. Your blade life will go up. Your sawing quality will go up. Your maintenance will go down. 
It's just one of those things in life that's going to make it a whole lot easier. One of the things on this, these adjustment bolts here, on these top bolts and bottom bolts especially, these little plates are not very thick. They're threaded for that bolt to go through. They like to strip out if you over tighten them. Don't ask me how I know. I have a tendency to put the cowabunga on everything. When you strip this bolt out right here, that little piece of metal, there's several different things I've done. Number one, I've re-drilled it and re-tapped it and put the next size bigger bolt in it. I have also taken and spot welded this nut onto it, which will then allow you, you won't have a lock nut on it no more, but at least it'll still have threads and it can get you by until your next part comes in. But there's, that's one of the tricks I've used to get by with things. With the blade guide arm, I don't have to do it with the LT70. But with the LT40s and whatnot, back when I had an LT40, I would utilize, actually got by better with a uh, Canon WD-40 because it has a small red lid on it. But I would center that blade right over the top of it to where I could just barely see daylight through it with the blade guard all, all the way out. Then I'd reposition the can to the center or to the inside and as you're bringing that blade guide arm, you pay attention to how far that blade is above or below that, that can. And that'll let you adjust your blade guide tilt this way. On the 40s and the, I'm not sure on the 35s, I've never been around one. But on the LT40 that I used to have, it had bolts that as you turned them, they would adjust that blade guide arm up or down depending on which way you turned them and everything else but you want to get it to where that blade guide arm is going perfectly straight or parallel to your bed rail going in and out with the lt40s um back when i had one i run a b56 belt on the pulleys or the blade guide for the blade wheels. The B56 fit a lot tighter. I didn't have to fight getting the sawdust inside of them. Um, I know several people that talk about they don't have the problem with the sawdust getting under the belts, but some of those, in, most of those individuals are running a little bit older mills, even older than mine, and they don't have what we call the high performance blade guides. Without these, I think these high performance blade guys has the tendency to make the sawdust flare and get up underneath that. I don't know that, I'm not an engineer. That's what I'm gonna blame it on. I don't stress over these performance blade guides. I don't know personally, I feel like if I've got a problem with my alignment, it's gonna be before or after. It's either before the blade guide, performance blade guide on this side or after it on this side. It's either this blade guide roller or that blade guide roller or some other form of the alignment is affecting that blade. Because if those blade guide rollers are right, that blade, in my opinion, should never touch that high performance blade guide. So as long as you got her dialed in, these are nice to have. It's a little extra security. But if I ever start touching them, I don't like it. We're going to find out what the problem is and fix it because I'm, I'm going to start producing poor quality lumber that I won't sell. It'll just it'll go to the trash pile. Hope this helps some of y'all. Don't be afraid to hit me with some questions in the comments. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe. Take all the support I can get. I appreciate y'all. Have a great day.